Now, former soprano being judged on her body weight to a Facebook page entirely dedicated to women eating on the tube. Are these just annoying one-off incidents or examples of everyday sexism? In London, where you might expect the whole sexism debate to be a thing of the past, there are some who argue it's everywhere and women have to take on a zero-tolerance approach before true equal rights will ever be established. Alison Earl went out to ask men and women in London about their experiences of subtle sexism. I haven't experienced much sexism recently in the UK. Um, it, everything seems quite fair for me. Uh, I've experienced it in other countries, but I think fortunate, fortunately here in the UK it's, uh, it's dying out, which is a good thing. I've had some comments thrown at me, yeah, I've had. Um, like, you should be in the kitchen doing this, but you know, that's expected <laughs> at work. But, um... You know, it's always nice for somebody to say that, you know, that a man bum looks nice or whatever it is, right? That's what we get in the office, but at the same time, it's, uh, you know, you do get sexism that's kind of bad, so you get, you know, men that don't, are not physically very strong, they can't pick stuff up. Women, are, they make snare remarks sometimes. Um, stuff like that. I mean, if, if, if that was on the other foot, the woman wouldn't really like that sort of thing. I try not to to overthink it too much. If someone calls me love, then I don't particularly mind. I don't think they're trying to be sexist. It's like one of those things when um, men offer you seats on the tube, even though you, I mean, you might not be pregnant or carrying things, and it's just a nice gesture to do to like another human being. Right, now here to talk about sexism in the capital are Daisy Buchanan. She's a columnist for The Guardian. Mike Buchanan, no relation, founder of Justice for Men and Boys and the Alternative Sexism Project. And Dina Rickman, who's one of the London Live Three, who comments on issues affecting young Londoners. Um, now, Daisy, what do you think the issues are in terms of just the daily, everyday experiences of sexism? You know, one of those um, people in the boxes said someone calls her love. She doesn't mind that. I think the trouble with this is that it's quite easy to get to a point where you never experience it and you do think, no, there are no problems, it's fine now, we're evolved beyond this. And then it does suddenly and dramatically hit you and it can be one horrible instant or a few little instances. Um, something that I think is really interesting is um, in her book, How to Be a Woman, Kat Lamaran talks about the idea of bringing a broken windows policy to feminism and that you have to kind of fight the small stuff. You can't just wait for it to amass and amass and amass before it becomes a bigger problem. But well, yeah, I've had, you know, if a man in a shop or anyone in a shop calls me love, women call me love, I don't think that is part of the problem. I call men being called love too. But OK, so you're saying it, the, the bigger issues, have you experienced the big issue of sexism where you think that you were that you were treated badly just because you were a woman? I've frequently had sexual abuse shouted at me from cars. I've often been afraid to get the tube home at night. Every single one of my friends has experienced a mugging or a fear um, after the awful, awful instance of the weekend. Sexual abuse shouted at you? Yes. So, I mean, not anything I can say um, at lunchtime um, <laughs> on the television. But yes, very kind of obscene suggestions. Um, the last time was about a week ago, and it was broad daylight. I was walking through Canary Wharf, busy road. Some men beckoned me over to their car, um, and I assumed that they wanted directions, so in good faith I went over to help, but they were um, propositioning me, and obviously I was not going to get into their car with them, but I felt that it was just tragic that, I, you know, I can't be a woman in my 20s walking around in daylight in London and not feel scared and not feel threatened. Mike, is this a fair point Daisy is making? This is something that women today in London shouldn't have to put up with? Of course they shouldn't, but, but the, the sexism faced by men is, 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 is far graver. We, we have in our consultation document 20 areas where the state um, assaults men, men and boys through, through, well, through, through the state's actions and uh, inactions. And I challenge any one of the three of you to tell me one area where, in, in Britain today, the state disadvantages women and girls. One. Is this an issue? Do, do, do the state disadvantage women and girls? I'm sorry, c can I just give one, one example of that? A domestic violence. Well, let, let, let's let okay. Dina answer the question, then we can get, make your point. I mean, well, I think that there's a gender pay gap, and the people who are losing out on the gender pay gap aren't men, they're women. Women are paid less than men. Um, and that is something that starts not when we're in our early 20s, but after motherhood, which seems to me that there is a disadvantage to women and there is, there is sexism towards women. But I don't think that it's a competition to see who's the most wronged. I think that we live in a sexist society and it disadvantages men and women because we're expected to conform and you know, live in this world that's designed for men to basically go out to work and women to stay at home. And, and it begins to be difficult when we don't live that way. Absolutely, I'm sure Mike would agree that sexism hurts everyone 
the reason I think we're all here is because we all want to live in a city and a world where men and women have equal opportunities and equal benefits. And I don't think there's anyone who would argue for sexism that harms men ever. I've written about the way certain products are marketed towards men and how that is damaging. You know, I don't deny that doesn't exist, but I do think that, you know, as you know, we sort of discussed, women on average earn three hundred thousand pounds in their lifetime less because than men. Because they go into different lines of work. They they, they don't go into um, lines of work which have which have um, a risk um, um, a premium if you like. Um, I think that, what do you mean? What lines of work is well, this where women don't have as much risk as men? Well, I mean, 124, sorry, 126 people died last year mm -hmm. in work-related incidents. Two of them are women. Women do not go into those lines of work. Um, and ju just to go back to the, 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 the gender pay gap has been discredited decade after decade. It's all down to different lines of work. But if I can just, just have, have one example of everyday sexism. Uh, um, we, we, we know that about 40% of victims of domestic violence are men. Yet for every place in a refuge in Britain available for an abused man, there are 180 available for women. OK, okay. So I would say to you that domestic violence does affect men and it's a really serious problem and I would never want to minimise the pain that men are in, but men are not the people who tend to die. So what I would say is that there aren't enough places and refuges for women, there aren't enough places and refuges for men. Uh, there's problems with benefits for men and women who have been uh, victims of domestic violence. But, you know, let the places and refuges go to people who are most likely to be killed. And in that case, it is, it is the women who are that's, mostly killed. That's absurd. That, that is but, absolute okay. lack but of no, for men, you, That's, that's not, not true. more chance of women than being killed on, on well, domestic well, violence. Well, that's well, just well, a simple well, there is, statistical but, but, truth. So, that's, that's so you're saying that... That's a very small number. It's that's not a very sexist, small number. 800,000 men a year yeah. face, sexual, face, face uh, domestic violence. Oh, yeah, and two and, women and, and die are, a week. And there are 15, 15 places... For, for men in refuges in, in the UK. And that's now, awful, on, and, and there's there a real 20, problem with I'm funding sorry, for refugees. I said earlier on there are 20 areas in which the state disadvantages women, disadvantages men and boys, and the three of you haven't come up with one area where it disadvantages women and girls. I, seriously, I invite you to come up with one. Well, I think we talked about the gender pay gap. The gender pay, pay gap has been discredited for decades. But I don't, I don't think that it has. But I think if I you think talk about the gender pay gap, I think what you oh, sorry, mentioned the left -wing press, it has. Serious. Obviously, nobody wants there to be any deaths in the workplace, but I do think that's a separate issue about um, safety in the workplace. I also think that you have to look at what happens in schools, the way that women are taught to, or you know, encouraged to go into certain professions, to take up certain subjects. Um, I don't know Absolute the figures nonsense. off the top of my head, I'm afraid. You do find a lot more um, young women um, tend to study the arts and humanities as opposed to the scientists. That's I think choice. we'd love to see That's a lot choice. more women. I mean, and I don't think so you can say it's choice. Daisy when... has got so ridiculous today that female postgraduate engineering students at Brunel earn £15,000 a year additional grant purely because they're women. They don't want to go into that line that's of work. Largely why? Because that, which, well, that's largely because there's not enough women going into yeah. the industry. But why, why, why is why is no one complaining about this? Seventy percent of medical students who are women. That isn't a problem, apparently. So why, why, well, where, why where, is, do you get, where do you get all your figures from? Well, uh, official statistics. They're, they're all available. Because I'm, I'm, they're I'm, all on I'm our quite interested to find out exactly where you get the figures in terms of men are. There, there is no um, gender pay gap. It, it, it has been. Really, I, I can't believe anyone would come up with that. You know, it has been discredited for, for 20 years. Women go into different lines of work. There are lines of work they want to go into. So, so supply exceeds demand, and that... It's just, you know... I'm I, sorry, I, the reason I'm laughing is because everything that you're saying is laughable. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there is a gender so, pay gap. So, so you so might you not want it to exist, it, because it you exist, clearly no, don't exists. like women very much. It exists, but, but it, it does. It does exist. Mike, is this, a, is this a fair point Dina's making? You don't like women very much? Uh, absolute is that nonsense. Is, because absolute I have, nonsense. To, be fair, to be fair to Daisy and Dina, they have said that, look, there, there are issues which affect men well, they've come just up as much one, as women. Which, which has been discredited. You know, the, the, it's, it's perfectly well known that that there is a gender pay gap, but it's down to women's choices. Women will not go into things like engineering and, and you know... Um... OK, but I think that... I don't know um, if you uh, know any women or... I mean, you... I do. What a I... silly statement. <laughs> OK. Um, when women, when women are young, it's a lot, a lot of the things that people who are sort of anti-sex integrationists or people who campaign for women to get more involved with science and technology and engineering and maths say is that they're not, they're not incentivised and, and they're not told when they're young, when they're in school, that they can do these jobs. And that's why, why do, there's a lot of work. Wh to wh why do they always have to be incentivised? Why do women need role models? I mean, for God's sake, are they adults or are they sheep? Mike, who are your role models? Ma Margaret Thatcher. A woman. Yes. So, how do you? How, how, what's your view of Margaret Thatcher? I think then? she was the most astonishing political, you know, the most astonishing political, um, sorry, uh, prime minister of this, you know, mm -hmm. peacetime prime minister 
for 100 years. A, a most remarkable woman who got to the top on, 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 on working on a, you know, working very hard mm -hmm. and not expecting, you know, spe special treatment. And she had put quite a lot of measures in place that really work to keep women out of the workplace, especially single mothers. Um, does that fit with your credo? Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. What about everyday sexism in terms of everyday in your life, in your working situation? And Dina, what have you experienced there? Um, Oh, I was talking to someone the other day and I said that I was just talking about the art of like getting in a taxi and I said obviously you know when you get in a taxi the first thing that the taxi driver says to you is oh do you have a boyfriend and they were like really and it was like yeah I mean obviously you don't realize it but it doesn't happen to men and you don't have to say to a taxi driver or to a man on the street like who will come I mean men approach me on the street a bit um, and you know you don't have to say to them please go away I have a boyfriend because uh, I mean, that, that is kind of a bit... They sort of and just I expect you to be interested. And I think it's the only way you can get a man to leave you alone is to essentially say, I am owned by another man. Yeah, Sorry. because he respects the other man more than your decision to say no to him. What's your feelings, then, on this sort of society approach to women and it, sexism? I, th I think it's pathetic. I think it's turning... turning it's, it's, it's just a recipe for whiny women to whine, which is why we call the Everyday Sexism Project the Everyday Whining Project. You, you actually get stronger in life by meeting challenges. You don't get stronger by expecting the world mysteriously to stop, you know, a few sexist men I sort of saying things to I you. Really I really wish so Mike was right. I really wish this is imaginary. I really wish but that... It's low-level stuff. I don't think yeah. that it's low-level stuff, and I don't think that it's very respectful for you to minimise the experience of loads of women. I mean, th there is a problem um, it just in terms of getting on the tube. The other day, I was getting off the tube and a man reached out and grabbed my breast. I mean, that is not something that should have to happen on tubes. That's inappropriate behaviour. Mm. And I shouldn't have to feel bad right. or sad for a day. OK, Dina, we're just going to... We've been polling this question all day, talking about everyday sexism. We want to know if you think society is becoming more or less sexist. Get voting, just going to London Live .co.uk. Let's see how you've been voting so far. And those results are just coming in. OK, now, here we go. Now, so, so, is society becoming more or less sexist? 42% of you um, say more, it's becoming more sexist, whereas 58% of you say it's becoming less, as a matter of fact. And also, just look at um, some messages that you've been sending in. We've got one Facebook message. Right, now, uh, Martin Philp says, I think people are more acutely aware of sexism. However, you still don't hear the media uh, much, if anything, about male sexual discrimination um, takes place. So this is someone um, agreeing with you here, uh, Mike. Um, Daisy, what do you think about the issues concerning men and boys in regards to sexual discrimination? Well, as I've mentioned, I've written extensively about it before, especially about mental health. I think something that is very interesting and worth considering is that... Um, you know, sort of year on year, um, you know, the tragic things like sort of suicide figures amongst men are up and there is an, a perception that it's because men are increasingly isolated and alienated and they don't have to anyone to kind of discuss their struggles with. I think it's interesting that Mike's more or less saying, man up, you know, that everyone should just get on with it because, I'm you know, I think if there is a problem with sexism out there that um, and men feel overwhelmed. If I was a guy right now and I was confronted with so many examples of men being terrible and men's sex behaviour, I feel really frightened and isolated. And I think it's great to discuss this. I think the more we can talk about it, the more we can, you know, address sort of those mental health issues across the board. I mean, this is a quite an interesting point. In regards to the issues and the mental health issues mm. men have to deal with, is that something created by men? It's not something you could say would be created by women. No, I mean... So, in so, terms so, of so, why they can't no, talk, I, I, why they can't no, talk no. about their emotions, no, express no, themselves. No, again, I, you know, when, when people talk about male suicides, and it's because they, because they, you know, they can't talk about their emotions. I think that's kicking a dead man, quite frankly. Um, um, some, some, some months ago, I, I did a piece on homelessness, which is an overwhelmingly a male problem. Um, and um, a, a social worker wrote in to say, she emailed me to say that, that she works in a, in, 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 you know, that she works with the homeless. And if, if, if a homeless woman comes to her on a Friday, she, 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 she has to give her clothes, money, food, and, and accommodation. If a man comes in on a Friday, he's sent back out on the street with nothing. I mean, are we really surprised that, that today, for every woman who commits suicide, uh, th th 3.5 men will? Mike, the, the, we really the, need to talk about where you get these figures from. Okay, they're, all just official, they're all government it is, figures. It is all, true every one that of them. more young men commit suicide uh, than women. And killer. it's also a real issue that um, men are more likely to have more progressed cancers because they won't go to the doctor and they won't present their symptoms. I mean, those are really big problems. 
Um, and I think that, in a way, they, men are the victims of our society, where we expect men to be silent and to man up and to not say what's wrong with them and to not talk about their emotions and for women to be more expressive. I lost oh, count of the number of adverts you see where, you know, I'm it's like the so, men being... so, so sorry. Um, <laughs> Daisy, Dina, Mike, thank you so much. You've got to end it there. Although, if you want to still get involved in that, just go to our Twitter page, at London Live, hashtag Headline London, or indeed vote in our poll at londonlive.co.uk.